In this video, I'm going to talk about scatter plots and the inclusion of line of best fits or the fit line uh, that can be added to a scatter plot. And I'm also going to talk about the regression equation that can be included or excluded in a scatter plot. This is a follow up video that uh, from something I made very recently on this very topic where I demonstrated a way of excluding the regression equation that was a little bit cumbersome. But based on some comments on that video uh, by these two individuals in particular, uh, I've rediscovered the utility of the add label line. So I've got a much easier, s there is a much easier solution to the problem. But it also made me think about how the more complicated solution to the problem can be used in another study. So I'm going to talk about the scatter plot and show the easier way of solving the problem and work on the addition of a, a second regression line in a scatter plot. So to create a scatter plot with a fit line, go into graphs, legacy dialog, scatter plot, click on simple and define. This study is based on simulated data uh, relevant to the distinctiveness of faces and their attractiveness. The results are, the data are simulated to replicate a previous study, so the results are actually uh, based on a, an actual study. So put the uh, distinctive, put your independent variable in the x-axis, the dependent variable in the y-axis, and click OK. And SPSS produces this less than attractive scatter plot. So I'm just going to make some small changes to it so that it's something that will be uh, at least a little bit attractive. So I'm going to get rid of the border. Now the border is transparent. I'm going to change this font size to 14 and this to 14. And uh, I'm going to change the chart size to 350 and make it square. OK, there's a few other things I could do to make it better, uh, more attractive. I just maintain the ac aspect ratio there by accident. There we go. So this is the scatter plot that uh, doesn't really depict an association when really, in fact, there is an association between these two variables. And that association can be depicted by the inclusion of a fit line. And that can be included by clicking on this button here. And what SPSS does is that it automatically adds this uh, regression equation, which is the intercept plus the unstandardized slope uh, times a value of x. Most of the time, I don't think you'd ever want to see that in a uh, scatter plot. And if you click on this button here, attach label to the line, if you deselect it and click Apply, it disappears. Now you probably also want to get rid of this thing here, the R squared. So if you click on that and then press Delete, it should disappear. So now you have a regression line uh, in your scatter plot that does not include the regression equation. So one thing I'd uh, like to point out is uh, that you can actually add another regression line if you wanted to, which was based on uh, my original solution to the problem, uh, which is to add a reference line from the equation. And I thought, why would you want to include something like that in a scatter plot? And I did think of a, a possible way that actually might be quite informative, and that's to include the regression line from a previous study that you might be replicating or comparing. So in this study, the regression effect is based on an intercept and a and a slope. And distinctiveness is the independent variable, and the attractiveness variable is the dependent variable. And this is the regression equation. So this regression line that's included in here is based on these values, a slope of 5.22 and a unstandard a slo a intercept of 5.22 and an unstandardized slope of negative 3.49. That's where those numbers come from when the label was added 5.22 plus negative 0.35 and I have to get rid of this again so what if there was another study that you wanted to include in this that actually found different results and you wanted to include that slope in there well you could click on here to add another regression line to your uh, analysis now I can think of a few other ways that this might be useful. And I encourage you to write comments how you might think it might be useful. But one thing I thought was, 
Well, what if another study was done and you're replicating that study and you wanted to show their result with a fit line? Let's say they had something like 3.45 as their intercept and they had a weaker effect of negative 0.22, say. And I click Apply and that's their slope, maybe even weaker than that, maybe negative 0.20. So that's their study that you've included their information about to create the fit line uh, to make it distinct from uh, your fit line. So this is your study's fit line and this is the previous study. And you could add uh, annotation in there so that it would be demarcated as such. So Smith et al. 2002, let's say. And let me get rid of the border. Whoops. And increase the font size to maybe 11. And then I'm going to drag that over here. Is that Smith et al.? And your study would be the top one. You would write something like. current study and also get rid of the border for that one and textile also 11 Oops. and push that over here. And one thing that's interesting about um, this scatter plot oops is that uh, I probably want to move that a little bit, but actually I'm going to move it ag again. Uh, so this is Smith et al.'s regression line of fit, and this is yours based on your own data. And then people can actually look and see that, well, the intercept is different. So Smith et al. found a different result than you did. The slope is less uh, substantial, and the intercepts are also different. And what's interesting is that the intercept in these, based on these data is 5.22 and the intercept here is not intersecting with the y-axis uh, at 5.22 even though the intercept is and it's not because the slope is I should say it's not because the x-axis is has a lower margin buffer of 5% I can even add that to 0 so even when I add it to 0 I'm still not there the reason is that the value of y the intercept is the value of y when x is 0. So you actually have to change the scale to 0 even though there are no observations in the data file that are 0. This was a scale of 1 to 7 and so there actually are no. But it's an interesting question as to whether if you're going to include a regression line in your data which is based on the, s on the intercept and the slope whether you should actually always have your x-axis up to zero. There are plenty of scatter plots that do not do that. And in this case, as I mentioned, there actually are no observations that go to zero. But this definitely makes the um, slope look more accurate because um, the intercept actually is represented at the point at which it intersects. So that's 5.22 and that's 5.22. So you actually have to blow out your x-axis to zero, even though the scale is actually one to seven. So it's an interesting uh, point that I never really thought about because I don't really create scatter plots very often. Uh, so this is how you can create a scatter plot: include the line of fit. You can include or exclude the equation as if you want. I prefer probably not to include it. You have that option to exclude it, and then you have the option of including another line of fit that you might want to use in comparison with another study. Uh, if you use that extra option uh, that I originally proposed as a solution to the problem to get rid of the regression uh, equation in the first instance.